but Sperry doing what he had to do. An absolute tooth and nail battle so far. Ninja was able to get out from underneath Mario Sperry, and that was a, a significant task. He's been able to stay out of trouble. Got to watch out for that guard getting up high now. They're going to scoot him back to the beginning, of, to the middle of the ring. Yeah, it was kind of, um, Mario Sperry really thought there that he would have had the guillotine, eh? jumping dead in that guard, yeah. uh, wrapping the legs around him. But Ninja tucked that, tucked that chin, and, you know, they say that sweat is a big factor, and he just sl slid right out of that. Yeah, Mario now probably will go for uh, like a triangle, like his teammate Nogueira is very good at. But uh, Ninja will know and uh, try maybe to set, let him try to get it and then use that attempt. Pass, pass his guard. That's it, maybe. Or stand up. If it, it will. An elbow and now Ninja just stand up. All he has to do is stand up because Sperry is. See, Ninja wants to throw that stomp. The flag stop there by Ninja. Ninja back on on, on the ground, side mounted on Mario Sperry. I don't think oh. Ninja wants to be there. Standing back up. Oh my lord! They're fighting tonight. Ninja with the right hand. Look at this. Sperry with the body lock. Ninja underhook and Sperry gets the trip takedown. The side mount. It looked like he wanted to go to the full mount, but I wouldn't do that. He's trying for the mount. Yep, he's trying for it. He's got the uh, half guard by Ninja. They don't need a restart. They do their own restarts. Wow, you can say that again. Just when you think that the best fight has been uh, that happened tonight. <laughs> you see action like this. <laughs> well, so far, this fight has been a non-stop highlight reel. Yes. I mean, how to escape from this, how to punch that. I mean, it is great. Five minutes only into the fight. We've got three times now in total, five minutes to go again. He's going for that arm bar again. He's trying to set something up, but which could bring him. Yes, he's going to get it. Whoa. He's got to get. Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to step over the head. He can finish this. Ninja's got to do something quick. No, he doesn't he, have he's, he's, he's getting out. He's getting out. Well, yeah, he, he's, he's going to get out. He's going to get out the back door. But he's got to watch out not to go in the wrong bar. Oh! Big left hand by Ninja. Oh, Ninja. Ninja needs to get back up. Oh, stop by Ninja. But there's no stopping. He's, he's going, going. There's not one second he doesn't stop fighting. That was a close call, but what he did very well was keep that arm stretched for that, refer for that figure four arm bar. That was a perfect thing to do, to keep the arm stretched. But Ninja, has, yeah. Ninja has to know, on the ground, he's always in danger with Sperry. Yep. It, all it takes is that little slip of a move, and he, he could be tapping. Because we saw that with his teammate, Jose Pele Landy, in that classic match in the Pride Fighting Championships, Bad Blood, not, not too long ago, in the last Pride, as a matter of fact, we saw Pele get out of just about everything that Carlos threw at him, then that one little mistake, and the fight was over. Ninja's got to really be careful on the ground. I know he's confident in his grappling ability. I think when Sperry opens his guard and stops with the overhooks, I think Ninja should stand back up. I think so too. It's exactly the same thing. And also now, uh, nearly escaping that armbar, Ninja has been warned. You know, he, uh, he, he, he will probably fight a little bit more with strategy now. Because he knows if he makes a little mistake and he does it a little bit more than the last time, he's going to get it. He can set him up already again for Kimura. Look at Mario working from the bottom, looking yeah. for submissions. Yeah, he's looking all right. As a matter of fact, he's stacking those knees up real high. And he just got to be careful because a triangle could be imminent. Yep, but then again, he could use it also to set it up. It's, you don't know anymore. It's, look at this. And Ninja hops out, almost hops out of full guard, but back in by some good leg work by Sperry on the bottom. Three minutes left in the match, and what a match. Yeah, if it keeps uh, going like this, on this speed, then, um, then, then, then let's see if age is going to be affected later on in the, in, in the fight. Well, Mario looks to be in tremendous shape, and although Ninja doesn't look cut, his energy has never been questioned. Never. Never. And uh, the, the only reason that he fights a little slower now is, yeah, like I said, he, he has been warned in yeah. almost submission. And there is uh, the Pride Heavyweight Champion, 
Antonio Minotauro Nogueira in Sperry's corner, shouting instructions. Mario Sperry scooting his hips all the time, looking for one little mistake, pushing the arms backwards of Murillo. That could be a setup for a triangle choke. It could be a fake for a triangle choke, and they go for a straight arm bar. It's th those guys are so very well run on the ground. You, you never know where it's going to come from. And Ninja keeps chopping away with that left hand, and it's caught Sperry a couple times. Ninja staying busy here. Uh, Mario scooting out, as you said. And Ninja should just stand up here. Just stand up. Okay. The referee Good call. Starts. Yeah. He restarts Mario's very standing. And are they going to come out guns and blazing again? I bet they will. I bet Ninja will. <laughs> There's a warning himself. You need to keep your hands up. I can high kick. Mario's doing a real good job. I, I, I will put my... Oh, Mario coming in late. And look at Ninja cracking up. He got caught with a left hand. Some good knees there from Ninja to the midsection. But Mario tried to trip him down. And Mario going for that front guillotine again. Oh, nice! I tell you, Ninja was rocked too. He, he, he made the right hand too. But Sperry was rocked and Sperry was covered again. Sperry was man, beating the hell out of each other in this fight. <laughs> what an awesome match. Look, look at this. Now Mario is in control. He recovered. His recovery from the punch is unbelievable. Absolutely. Ninja on the bottom. Less than 30 seconds left in this absolute outright war of a first round. Yeah, this <laughs> being both from the two best gyms in Brazil has a lot to do with the outcome of this fight, with the, with the high energy of this fight. I gotta tell you, I feel like applauding because this match anyway. left nothing to the imagination. They gave us everything. Kicks, knees, takedowns, reversals, guys getting rocked. I would have to say, though, Ninja did the most damage in that first round. I I know, but Mario did the you know, Watch this. They're both going to get hit. No, that, that, that was, was the first that knockdown. Was the first and one, you know, yeah. it, it's like we said before, he recovered from that. He got dropped, and he recovered. He jumped right back in the fight. Mario has got a chin, man. There it is again. Oh. That, I mean... We've seen people get hit by that, and it was the end of the fight. And Mario just jumped back up, got into the over-under clinch, and got back in the fight. Now here, they're going to they're gonna hustle back up, and that's the front guillotine. He's going to jump into the gun. Yep. And then he's going to pop out. And he pops out, and Ninja answers back with the right hand. And Very here's, here's the, uh, it's the hammerlock attempt by Sperry, and he almost had it. And Ninja, through the graces of God and good training, was able to slide out because he was in a bad, bad position, boss. Very bad, he, but he did a perfect job by stretching his arm because if he would have had that arm, bent, kept that arm bent, it would have been over. Look at that punch again. I think his mistake in standing back up was he jumped back on him and he got taken down again. Murillo has got to keep this fight at a distance standing up. Look at the shoot up here. Look, that, that, that rocked Mario Sperry. That left hook really rocked him. Yeah, but also the, 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 the left hook for Mario Sperry to Ninja Rock, uh, Marilla Ninja too. They were both getting hit hard. Man, what an incredible, incredible first round. What is going on here in the round? We see the rep or the the, 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 the doctor in the stairs corner. Okay, nothing. Thank God, nothing going on. I don't see a doctor. Yeah, I, oh, he was there. Okay, he was the. Instead of the invisible kick, he was the invisible doctor. Uh, yeah, for camera he was, but for my eye, I could see him from here. Okay. Are they just gonna, are they gonna duke it out again? I bet they will. Ninja, whoa, flying knee by Ninja. Ninja wants to shoot it out with Sperry. Ninja oh, slipping at this. Ninja slipped there. They're just throwing caution to the wind in those punching exchanges. Oh, this got so much power, what they're doing right now. No kidding. Look at this. Oh. Ninja gets the takedown, but Ninja wants this fight on his feet. 
Look at this, what a troll. Nice. Ninja's got Sperry's back, but Sperry's gonna get out of trouble. Nibar. Sperry gonna go for Nibar. Yep. He's going to get it, maybe. He's going to get it, maybe. He's gotta get out, he got out. Woo! What a skip. Oh, right hand! Right hand by Ninja! So now we see it all. Oh, even lacks it. Oh, that doesn't stop. Okay, what is next? I think, oh, there's the knees. It looks like Sperry's slowing down here. All it's gonna take is one knee to really make him slow down. Oh, oh it's a choke. Is he choke? And it looks like it's under, no, 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 no. Yes, it is. No, he doesn't have it because he doesn't have it, no. He doesn't have it because Sperry, but he, he could. He can, can he choke him out slowly with he one should, hand? Uh, no, yes, he could. He can pull his left shoulder back now, Ninja. But he's got to pull his left shoulder back. Sperry is deep breathing here. Yeah. Sperry is, yeah. Sperry is going to try and hang on to that leg. And Sperry yeah. got out. Oh. Right. Yeah, it was more of an optical illusion uh, from here than it looked like that. So. Boss, I'm going to tell you, you and I have seen every fight in the Pride Fighting Championships. And our opinion is some of the greatest matches were soccer versus Newton. Yes. On the ground? Yeah. This one may have just topped that one. Oh, yes. Because, but this is like that that fight only, it's like 10 times faster. Look at this, Ninja's going for Kimura. <laughs> He's giving his own warning. Whoa, look at this. He's putting pressure on Mario Sperry. Three minutes left in the round. Yeah, this fight, exactly what I said, this is an unbelievable fight. I tell you, hot blood, hot blood. Two Brazilians going at it. Two of the best, two of the best fighters in the world. Meeting, head to head, Pride Fighting Championships, and armed and ready. Both these guys are armed, and boy, oh boy, are they ready. And they're rolling around again, like you said before. <laughs> Yeah. Armed and ready. Well, Ninja was armed yeah, well, already when he stepped before he came in his ninja suit. <laughs> yeah, well, they were rolling. It's sort of a, it a Bob Marley joke in there somewhere. I got you, man. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Look at this side joke. No, it's, it cannot be, yeah? no. If he, no, no, there's no, 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 there's no way. He's moving to set. If, but no, no, he's, he's in position, but he's on the bottom. But, but still, he can do it then. Uh, a ninja should turn his head now to the left and catch um, um, his arm with his jaw. Catch the arm from my respect with the uh, ninja, ninja gave it up, but the, the fact is that Ninja has been the aggressor with the submissions this round. Yeah. Ninja is what an incredible fighter this guy is. He's grabbing a leg there, Mario, so it could be that he's going to step over again and go for a knee bar or something, see? What, what, what can he do? I mean, I, I, would, I never expected that knee bar. And there he is, bang, out of nowhere. It looks like he's setting him up again. Yes, it does, but the sweat is going to be a factor. Yeah. You get later in the fight. Oh, and there we go again. Look, he's got the hammer lock. The ninja has got to work, and he's got, he doesn't have the elbow, though. Oh, he, yes, he does. No, it could be over. Oh, his, his head got on him. Get out of And he got out. He got out. Oh, what a miracle. Otherwise, he got out. Had it. Oh. Okay, man, this is a mission attempt to him. One back, one forward, one back, one forward. I'll tell you, is ninja tiring? Sperry's on top. It, it's amazing. This fight. Look at this. Okay. Standing back up. Sperry with a knee attempt. And they're duking it out again. Looks like Ninja is getting winded here. Trading the knees. It, it, it's, it's pretty much already impossible that they're still fighting on, the, on this. <laughs> with his energy. I think this is going to come down to condition. Because... The guy that gets tired first is going to lose the fight. Yeah. If it goes to the judges, I, 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 That's why I always say I do not want to be a judge. I've been a judge a number of times, and fortunately... Ooh. But with fights like this, huh, you don't want to be a judge. Well, I, I remember one time I was at the, the UFC and I was a judge, and... Every fight ended in TKO or knockout except one. And it was obvious who was, so it was like, yeah, 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 you don't want to, you're the same as me, man. I don't want to be the one who uh, makes the wrong mistake by accident or no. something or whatever. On a close fight where, where both guys have put, what's going on? They, they, they're having a, a debate about what position they were in. Okay, Ninja, there's that drop, oh, that knee. 
and Ninja's got his back. He's on oh, Ninja, Ninja that was a good knee. blasting a good knee. But man, Mario Sperry, he's got a hard head. Yes, Mario is doing a yeah, tremendous job here. I knew this was going to be a great fight, oh. but I did not know how good a match this was going to be. Okay, Mario. Crawling up. Yeah, Mario uh, does look the worst yep. for the wear of the two right now. And Ninja, if he can regroup a little bit and keep this fight standing. Okay, here they go. Man, flying knee attempt and good right hand counter there and a good left by Mario. But uh, Ninja, uh, Mario got the best of that exchange. But a lot of the punches didn't land cleanly. And Mario tried for the trip and Ninja defended, and as you said, boss, to defend those takedowns like that, and here, here it is, the hammer lock. This is almost finished. He, he scooped his head out, watch this, and because he did it caught, kept holding his head down, he escaped the situation. Otherwise, he could have won it right here. Yeah. But what is gonna happen in round number three? I mean, Ninja looks real fresh, and here we got the doctor again in the ring. I don't know what for. Uh, and age, like we said in the beginning, it's a 14 years age difference. Ninja is 21 years old. It's it, 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 it got to play a factor later in the rounds. Okay, Sperry, he really looks like he's, uh, I don't want to say exhausted, but he's on his last legs here. Because, yeah. because I like, man, Ninja is just like, it's like a chomping shark in the middle of the ocean. but. I tell you, Sperry is no minnow. He's a barracuda. I mean, in the animal kingdom, these guys are both terminators. They're two anacondas trying to out-squeeze each other, but it's the strikes that have been the difference in the match. Yeah, but you know what? The factor, major factor right now is also Steven. Ninja sees Mario Sperry real tired. That's going to give Ninja wings. It's going to make him real relaxed. He's smiling. He just looked over. He's smiling. That is he a, knows. That's an excellent point. Yeah, Mario doesn't have the, the look of someone who is uh, real confident here. He has the look of someone who's tired. Yep. Um, and Ninja is coming out stalking. He's coming out stalking. He's probably throw a look. Okay. I don't know if he... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are a... Man, you are a sidekick boss. I am. And Sperry has this with his own low kick, but they want to... Ninja... Oh, oh, good left hand by Ninja! Ninja, oh wipe out of the ground. Should have stayed standing. And Mario, unbelievable, getting up again out of that situation. Yeah. Like, like you said, he should have... Get, stand on his feet. I don't think that that punch was what knocked Mario down. I think Mario just fell down. Yeah. Fell, fell into the garden, I think. Or fell into the back position. <laughs> but it's, but it's, you know, I think you're right about the uh, age thing. Yes. It's gotta be. 14 years is a big gap. It's, it's the amount of training that you can do. If you're older, and I know, because I'm, I'm, I'm past 35, you, you just need more time to recoup. Ninja, whoa, look at the left, nice. Oh, the left hook, that nice. left hook was beautiful. Now Ninja, why go, oh, look, oh, I almost went into a triangle choke. What's he doing? This guy's gonna give me a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, it's one little mistake, man, and he's gonna get it. I tell you, man. Sperry has had almost had Ninja. Ninja's like a cat with nine lives, and he's already used about seven of them in this match. Might have two more, and then. But does Sperry have enough of this gas tank? Ninja seems to be pulling ahead. The judges judge the fight, as you said earlier in the evening, on the fight as a whole, as, a, uh, as opposed to on a per-round basis. And it will be the man who's trying to finish the fight strongest at the end who will get the nod by the judges. Right now, that looks like Ninja, but Mario's got him locked up with a closed guard. Yeah, they, those punches here, they don't do a lot of damage, but the referee's going to see that too, and he's probably going to put them back on their feet, because this is not going to end the fight. This is not a position that you really can finish the fight. Okay, good. There we go. I like it. Oh, there's a cut. I think there's a cut. Yeah, I think they're just going to count him off. It's not really that bad. Mario doesn't look too good. 
There's no quit in him, though, but still. That would have been from a left hook if it was on the uh, right side. Is it probably going to patch him up? It's not a real bad cut. Um, we saw that happen earlier in the evening with uh, Mario's teammate, Arona, who actually came out on fire after they examined him. And they're going to restart the fighters. Are they going to go back to the ground? Oh, okay. See, we really care. We care about the safety of the fighters, and if there seems to be a little bit of a problem, they don't mind stopping the match. They don't mind taking over and giving them some medical attention because we want these guys to come back. We want these guys to, to have a healthy, long life, and uh, we want action. But uh, and we're going to get that. We've got that in this match. Oh, we surely did. And, uh, I think we're going to see it again because I think if we have about two minutes more left, Marilla will pump up the energy, but if he pumps it up the wrong way and he makes one little mistake, maybe Zamario can submit him even in the last 10 minutes with the strength that he has left. Well, I don't know that uh, Mario has the energy, but you never know. There we go. But I'll tell you one thing, the winner of this fight is going to be back in that middleweight sweepstakes that we've been talking about all evening long. And what a sweepstakes it is. It was a treatment tonight. <laughs> and there are two major fights going to come up. If the, if, if the evening ended right now, it would have been a great evening. Oh, incredible evening. I want to I see him stand back up. Yeah, me too. Or, or, or uh, Marius Perry's got to go for some He's got to do something. But like you said, he's got to go up. I don't see how I can because it, it looks like he's, he's on reserve energy here. And I think, I, I don't, I'm not saying he's in the survival mode because he's still chopping away. But uh, there's teammates. A little bit in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the ref got to start the fight. Put him yeah. up. Yeah, I think he's going to do it. He's taking a close look. Uh, one minute left. Okay. He's got to he's gotta put it up. Yeah, one minute left. Um, it's going to be hard to get a decisive finish here this close. Ninja's got to, he's got to, he's got to sit up and just start pounding away. He's got an open guard, so if Mario lets go of his arms, he should just stand up. But, you know, the fight's going to end any second here. And, yeah, even with a start up in 30 seconds, which now, 30, 30 <laughs> seconds left. Yeah, it's not going to do anything anymore. If I were uh, Ninja's corner, I'd say just go 100, 100 punches right now, fast as you can. Boom, boom, boom. Show them the ninja. We are really seeing something here. We are seeing, man, what a duel. Yeah, because what we don't see right now, if you just tune in now, you didn't see was the 15 minutes of war that those two guys had before this. Okay, they left no mystery. They left nothing to the imagination. They put it all right in front of everyone. And uh, Mario doesn't look like the winner in this fight. No, I don't think uh, so either. But um, you don't, we don't know. At the end, the last round, there was not a lot of damage at the day. Let's see the replay here. See, it was, yeah. it was he, he was basically almost got a full guard, but he, he still got caught with a punch. He was a stomp back kick to the head yeah. on the ground. I've never seen that before. Look at that, look at that left hand. See, Mario tried to counter, and that left hook was a good shot. And they were slipping and sliding a little bit. Almost like when the sweat gets at the bottom of the piece, like being an ice skating rink. Yeah, maybe he's gonna... And there it is. There's that uh, respect. And you, you like to see that. Yeah, I was thinking about a triple axel. Yeah. When you said that skipping and sliding. I think Ninja won. I think so too. Ninja. Okay. Yep. Ninja has won a unanimous decision over the master. Look at this. Mario Sperry. There's Pele. Pele is Ninja's teacher. Wow, what an emotional scene. Ninja coming to tears over his victory. 
uh, going back to congratulate the Brazilian top team. That was Ninja. Look at him. He's emotional. This is a high point. Oh, we've never shown him, we saw him like this. The man with no fear. Has emotions. emotions. Look at this guy. A star is born tonight. <laughs> he was already born, but now, now he's got the recognition, man. Look at this. This is an awesome win. Awesome that was a colossal win for Ninja. Man. Look at him. Oh, you gotta love this kid. 21 years old and beat Mario Sperry. Almost knocked him out a couple times. Yeah, but we can't take anything away from Mario Sperry. But this, this, the first, the first 15 minutes was so unbelievable from both sides. Like we said, we, we saw everything, everything. We saw submission attempt from both sides, which we didn't expect. We saw the flying knee, we saw a knee bar, a lag lock. Well, Mario Sperry going for a lag lock. A backwards back kick to the head while your opponent was on the ground. I never saw that in my life. Well, this is the first time that we have seen in the Pride Fighting Championships, Brazilian top team versus Shootbox. Could we see some matches in the future that pitted Brazilian top team? Because we've got a lot of fighters in the same weight division. Like we said before, this is the middleweight division. It's the middleweight division. It's on fire right now. And, you Nogueira know, Nogueira is crying himself no, Nogueira there. is crying in, in, in the face of the loss. The Pride heavyweight champion was driven to tears by that loss of his friend and training partner, Mario Sperry. This is his third time in Pride, and Sanae Kakuda is going to be looking to put a submission on Alexander Atska. But Atska has never tapped out in mixed martial art competition. He has beaten Marco Huas. He did go the distance with Igor Bokchanchin, and he went into the third round with Vandalay Silva when Vandalay was wrecking everybody early. How is Atska going to be able to beat Kakuda? It's going to be very difficult. That's <laughs> one thing for sure. Kakuda is growing and growing in submissions. Alex Tiebling, who trained with me for a little bit, he told me that Kakuda is his favorite fighter. So if a guy like that says that, it means he's very well rounded on the ground. Well, the organization is called the Pride Fighting Championships, and both these fighters being from Japan, they're going to have a lot of pride on the line when they step into the ring. Sanae! Sanae Kikuda. This is his third time in Pride. He fought the early days of Pride. Agakura, 183 cents. 91 Alexander Otsuka. In his corner, he's got Larry, Curly, and Mo, and he's going to really need their wisdom in this fight against Kakuda. I, you know, I, there is one thing, Stephen, that I want to say. Um, if he comes out to make it a street fight, that could be dangerous for him because if you come out with anger, anger, anger can disturb the fighting technique. Sometimes it's not good to be anger. Control anger, a very famous man used to say that was Bruce Lee. Controlled anger, but if you just go out, blaze. Oh, oh, yeah. I knew it! No shaking! Yeah. There. Oh, he gave, he dissed him, he dissed him right there, offered his hand and pulled it back. Here it is, the grudge match. Atsuka, that man right there, said he has no respect for Kakuda. Kakuda coming out, going for the lock, and Kakuda trying to trip Atsuka. If he goes to the ground, it's going to favor us tonight, Kakuda. Yeah, it depends also who's going to be on top. Of course, because Alexander got some good knees from the mind, from the sideboard. Look at this, our good knees too. Man, the crowd is totally into this. <laughs> A grudge match. I feel like I'm in Thailand. Listen to that. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. Yeah, who's going to get the takedown? Oh, and there it is. Kakuda gets the takedown on top of Atsuka. Atsuka with the close guard. I, I think it's a matter of time here, but one thing is for sure. Kakuda is sort of like the Japanese Jeremy Horn in that he takes his time when he fights. Whereas Asuka will try things and maybe even make mistakes, but I don't. <laughs> Look at this. He's patting him. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like you said. You know, the good thing about the pride rules also is the, the, the first 10 minutes round because so you can't take your time. Of course, you have to move because otherwise the referee puts you up back on your feet again. But as long as you keep moving, you can set everything up. So for somebody who's real good at submissions and keeps busy, that is a perfect rule right there. And leg lock is, is going to go for a leg lock, which would be a very smart thing to do because Alexander Otsuka is wearing shoes. Well, Kakuda uh, is well known for his loss to Henzo Gracie way back and that was in 1998 and it was a, a a match that almost went an hour it was a 50 minute match well oh he's got the out you don't want to push you don't want to stretch your arms here with a guy like you can come this is bad because he's going to go for an arm he's going to play with him for a while try and smother him there we go but if, Hendra Brazy did also an arm bar on Alexander Otsuka and Otsuka escaped, remember? So yeah. I don't know if it's a good, a good thing to do to go for a straight arm bar. Can you lose position? Well, but I guess the point is this. They both had uh, a common opponent in Henzo Gracie. Kakuda lost by submission after 50 minutes. Otsuka lost a decision. Now, Kakuda claims that he is twice the fighter he was when he fought Henzo back in 1998. And it looks like he is because there's a lot more action he looks very relaxed on the ground here very good in control like it's easy for him to stay in his control uh he is the 2002 and that's uh, this year abu dhabi submission wrestling champion he um he feels that the abu dhabi champions don't necessarily uh become champions in mixed martial arts and there's a variety of reasons uh, that he mentioned to us but what can Otsuka do here boss nothing he's got a buck and he's got to go for god now we have the arm bar this is he, not he's going to give up position you see yeah he gave Otsuka up position. should roll through no well yeah Otsuka's got to escape the mount as soon as um Kikuda sits up he can escape the mount position pretty easy if you want okay Kikuda going for uh He's going to try for side control, and he's going to probably spin around. Oh, what's... Uh, no. Oh. Atsuka was almost in a position to do his own arm bar, it's but... going to be a lag look right No. Whoa, kick to the head instead. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Now we're talking Atsuka on top. And if he's going to get pull that leg out, he's going to drop the knees like he did with Marco Huas. We've got six minutes left. I don't know if you folks at home can hear the cheering, but they were chanting Alexander. And it was like deafening. Yeah, not a oh, beautiful reversal. By the book and going for the sideline. Knee is perfectly high up. Yeah, he's got the knee on belly position. He's going to go for mount again, it looks like. He's in half guard now. <laughs> that was... <laughs> what was that move? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you call it. How you call it? What would you call it? I would call that the reverse fly swat. <laughs> how can you come up with it? Uh, it's real simple. It's like when we were in St. Petersburg, Russia, <laughs> commentating. And Soliev had the north-south position, then you got the mount from the same position. You figure it out. I got it. Mount again. Now it's going to be dangerous. He's got a high mount. It's more difficult to, to buck that one off. And it, Atsuka cannot turn his back here. It is a high mount. Kikuda locking up the hands. And 
Atsuka turning. Kikuda got his back now. He's got the hooks in, but he's a little off to the side, boss. Yep, he, he looks like he wants to set him up for an armbar and let, let, let him kick it to a, no, a he's, choke he's and then go for an arm. Yeah, he, but Atsuka firing back. Now, what move is this, boss? There's the back slap to the head. This is the, I'm turning right. No, it's a back fist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm turning right. <laughs> What movie? Any which way you can. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Was right it my turn, Clyde? Mount again. Full mount again. But he hasn't been able to do much with the full mount. He hasn't landed. Okay, there was a good left hand, but he's going to go for armbar now, I think. Yeah, he's grounding away, and this is the technique. Yes, he's going to go for an armbar now. Otsuka yeah, spinning again. Armbar. It was very smart. He was very close to get into an armbar. Atsuka's got some kind of a, a knot on his head. <laughs> yeah, it looks like some, that it looked like some alien st stuck a stethoscope inside of his brain or something programmed it for the fight. Experiment with him. The light that beamed him up. Yes, well, better don't make a mistake now because this is a total setup for a choke. But also we can go for an armbar here. Well, that was actually the armbar that Hanzo did on the uh, oh. Atsuka oh, no. taking a chance now. Atsuka in a bad position here. Okay, we've got three minutes left. Atsuka is a mess right here. Look at that head. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. On top of a skull. Maybe it's a secret weapon. Going to pop out. It's gonna, oh, no. That looked like he headbutted him. Backwards. Well, it hasn't been going too good for Alexander Atsuka, has it? No. It has. Kukuda uh, has been in control the whole fight now. Um, he, sh he should um, strike harder on the ground. That will, that with a, a guy with control like Kukuda, if he can... He's, really he's, he's, he's got him on side, side choke. Side choke right here. He's got him. No, he's not going to... Yeah, no, maybe now he's, he's going to get him. Him. No, he's out. Yeah, but... Arm uh, bar. Okay, no. Yeah, still. But not the other arm, it looks like. Wow. Well, at the least, Atsuka is taking a beating here. Yeah, there's an armbar coming up. For sure, he's going to go for it. It's got, it's got to be. But I, I can't understand that he cannot escape the mount position. Well, he's trying. Yeah, but it's not the way you have to do it. You know, you got to turn on your side, push the knee. You know, there's a good way to do it. Kokuda going for... A key lock from the bounce. And he's gonna he's gonna set up the arm bar here. Yep, there you go, boss. There it is, there it is. That's it. He's got it. Yeah, All he needs to do is break it loose and extend it. He's gonna use some energy here, but Oscar trying to kick his way out. Oscar has got yeah. he's got all of his pride involved and he won't let go. No, but it, oh he's gonna get out! He's gonna get out he's of it. Out. Beautiful! Asuka. And he's got the control! It's deafening in here. The crowd is going ballistic. Our sold out crowd is going insane because of that escape. And Atsuka on top. Kakuda getting ready for a sweep here. Yeah, Atsuka got to work here now. He's got not a lot of time left. If he really wants to do some damage, he's got to go try to go to the Simon and knees, lay the knees down, or do this, but then the position, hit the jaw, because otherwise he's going to go to round two. Yeah, it's going to go to round two. It doesn't look like, or it's going to be, oh, <laughs> but to the solar plexus. That's not good, Maybe that's how I got that lump on his head. And he did it backwards. Yeah, how, did, how did he get a lump on it? I don't know, but I saw it one time before. The fight against Franco Sikapu. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, but he he, he got he, he got he shin kicked some guy. But in this fight, Oscar, man, I mean he was he was on top. But yikes, he's a mess. I tell you, that bump on his head. You know, he's really got to change his pillows. I think. <laughs> That's one thing for sure. <laughs> You have special pillows for that. Look head, at that. Head pool or something, uh, they call it. Maybe some, uh, maybe get something to drain it like they do with Rocky. 
Cut me! Cut me, Cut Mick! Me. Cut me! <laughs> Here we go, look at this! Kakuda all over him. Oh, you see that was very close to that arm bar, straight arm bar there. Kakuda, Kakuda and there, we go. there it goes with the arm bar. When Kakuda um, mounts him, you should aim for that big zit and just try and see if you can shoot pop it. <laughs> Yeah. And man, I can't believe that Oscar didn't get off guard right here. He pulls it off perfectly. Whoa. And the side mount. Yep, one thing we can say for sure, Officer Ga, and we knew that before, is an escape artist. Man, oh man, oh man, it's been a wild night, and this fight has been no exception. We got the grudge match. The Atsuka wanted to turn it into a street fight, but Atsuka looking like he's been in a street fight. Yeah, but there's no quitting in his personality. He will fight till the end. Because he's got all that pride now, which you took with him in the ring by saying all these things and by hitting the hand away from Shikuta in the beginning of the fight. So he's got to go now. There's no stopping for him. No option. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. Kikuda has been in complete control of this fight, except for that little reversal. But Atsuka didn't really land any significant shots once he did re the reversal. Yeah, that's true. Atsuka looked like he just snuck through a barbed wire fence. One, two, go! And Kikuda getting a top lock up there, a double overhook. Oh, that oh. was a low blow. Yeah, that was a low blow. Now he keeps going. Well, so much for the completeness. Uh, Kakuda gets the trip takedown into the guard of Atsuka. Uh, uh, Atsuka going up high for a, either a triangle or an armbar, but he doesn't really have anything. Yeah, and you don't want to do that because then he can pass the guard. And mount or... Hmm. This is an interesting position. Grab the feet. That's what I just wanted to say. He could flip him and mount him. He can try. Yeah, but Kakuda's too experienced for that. Yeah, I think so too. But uh, still, Kakuda. If you don't shoot, you always miss. Kakuda has fought in just about every major martial arts organization there is. He fought in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He fought in Shudo. He fought in Pancras. And this is his third time in Pride. This guy's bounced around quite a bit. Yeah, so it. Uh, yeah. I don't think he's going to get submitted. He's going to go for leg lock. Oh, no. It was beautiful. Oh, there's Pass. the... Uh, he, Atsuka has got to block that knee like he just did. Yeah. I can't believe they let him out with a big thing in his nose. Me neither, but if he takes a few more shots, they're going to fill up. They're out of nose hole, too. And that's not very... That doesn't come in handy with the mouthpiece and your nose filled. <laughs> Like the movie of Fish Called Wanda with the French fries. Yeah. I just read your mind. Takuda mounted on top of him. Takuda spent four years at the Japan Physical Education University. And uh, it's interesting because Kakuda started at the age of seven years old in judo and practiced judo. Um, Actually, no, he started when he was 13 years old, and he's practiced for oh. seven years. And uh, Kakuda was on the uh, Team Japan uh, Championship. He was, he, was he was a team member of the... Uh, uh, his team won the Japanese team competition of judo. Wow. Yeah, judo, as you know, it's, it's, it's very high here. The level is very high here in Japan. Uh, Kakuda, uh, my instruction would be, listen, you've been the first round in Mount everything in mind, maybe you should try to go to the side and try something there. Because till now we have been unaffected. He's trying to go all the time for the side choke, uh, which isn't working. But um, if you really want to go for submissions, you know, well, look at this. Yeah, he almost gave him the armbar there, and now he's giving him his back. Yep. And then we got the back hand again. Yeah. The right turn. Right. Right turn. Two minutes. Yeah, he better not make a mistake. Uh, although he doesn't have his hips locked all the way for Oscar's hips, 
We've got only one hook in, so Oscar can turn to the right right now and get out of it, which is something that I would do if I was him. But it's been all Kikuda. Yep, he's been all over him. He is delivering the punishment. And Oscar has been taking it, but Oscar just mm -hmm. won't quit. Well, we know that. Well, if you go to distance with Eagle of Charging, and uh, you know, I've met a strong person. Oscar has got to do something. I mean, he, he can't just sit there. And, I mean, he's, gonna, he's not going to stop with those shots. But Kikuda should hit, try to hit the wound there or something. No, that, I think that the referee should say, do something here. If yeah. nobody answers, if he doesn't defend it, then uh, I, I don't think that's good. No. Okay, there are no power shots, so there's not a lot of uh, real damage involved, but still, you know, uh, do something. Atsuka just has not been competitive in this match against Kikuda. No. He just doesn't have any answers. You can't just win a fight on heart. You need skill. I mean, we heard the rhetoric about the street fight, and we've got 30 seconds left, and, and Oscar, goes for the choke. oh, he's going for it, but he, Oscar's got the chin down. But still he can smother him because he's oh, he, very tired. Yeah, he's got the, he's got position, boss. Yeah, and oh, he's, he's gonna, oh, and he's got it maybe. And you know what, Is it under? the bell might ring here. The left to the right. No, Oscar, I, he's, he's, out of, he's out of position. He doesn't have it around the neck. Yep, that's true. No. Oh, okay. Ah, that was round number two. Let's go into the third round. It's got to get better and better now. Kikuta, he yeah, stands up more energetic than he did in the first round. And worse and worse for Alexander Oscar, oh, yeah. if he can get up. Look at those cuts. These are, these are the weirdest cuts I've ever seen. It's almost like Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> you are on tonight, Basito. Oscar. Doesn't look good. No, he this, doesn't. This match. And it's another one-sided round for Kikuda. Just laying it on Atsuka. And Atsuka doing nothing. Um, fortunately, these shots, there's not, you can't really stop a guy with those shots, but they're, they're more than irritating. And then he's massaging his, what are we going to call that? What is that? A, a, a lump. <laughs> If, it is, if it's going to slide down, it's going to the hunch, but it's hunch back of Tokyo. <laughs> That's true. We'll call, um, we'll call him Quasi Moto. Quasi Tsutka, Otsuka. No, um, Otsuka is going to be in big problems in round number three uh, because it didn't look good for him in round number two. Um, <laughs> he right there, Kikuda, sees how tired Otsuka is and like in the last fight with Merlin Ninja against Mario Spare, that's going to give him wings. It's going to be more energetic. If I would have been uh, Kikuda and I got Alexander's back, I would stand up and start kicking to the head, which is allowed in the pride. And has more success than those punches that he's giving from the back. And here we've got two more guys that are right in that middleweight category. Um, okay, Alexander Atska was checked by a ringside doctor and he looks good to go for round number three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does he have to? Oh, left, left hook. hook. Nice left hook. Oh, oh in what, the groin. That was straight up the middle. Yeah. Hey, he doesn't have a lot of control. He's getting a warning from the referee. Um, that is not legal to knee to the groin in the Pride Fighting Championships. Yeah, I, I, I don't. The referee should do something about that. That continues because Atska seems to be desperate here. Yeah, it's like he's aiming for it. He's still got a good takedown defense, though. Oh, but this is an edible to take down, and yeah. there it is. And this is not good for Atsuka. Atsuka is probably going to get another pounding here. 
but Kikuda has just fallen short with the submission so far. Yeah, he will go to the mound again and then do the same thing. He should um, yeah, really try something different if he wants to finish the fight, I think. At 34 years of age, Kikuda is four years older than Alexander Otska. But I don't think that's going to be a factor here. No, I don't think so either. At 34, I would have never. I, I, I thought he was in the 25, if you look at him. He doesn't look 34. Yeah, that's it. That's really a big surprise for me. I think it was a young gun. Not to say that he's old, because he's not. Because at 37, you're still not old. Well, these guys are in that uh, infamous middleweight division. Boss, what is your assessment uh, of the middleweight division, and how would El Wapo do in the middleweight division? I don't know, but he, he, would, he would shine uh, at least his, his beautiful shaved head and um, look good. That's one thing for sure. Um, in fighting... He's training every day. He's doing a good job. He feels uh, good and strong. So, uh, let's see where that uh, is going to bring El Wapo. That was a short step left hand right? the job. Uh, Alexander is waving his arms. Could be a setup, you know, for please take my arm, go for an arm bar so I can get on top. And this is what you could do. Yeah. Side mount, try it out something different. There we go, see? Now he wants to finish the fight. Need to the body there, which uh, conveniently is located at the liver. <laughs> Bang! That's another drink right there at home. Yeah, it's right there. That's the liver, boss. Oh. We got the mound. Action! Which we have seen. Okay, now maybe now he's going to go for it. See, Alexander should bridge now and bump him off, but he is very tired. Exhausted. It was a good hand. And another one. Boss, we ate sushi last night, but they had liver on the menu for sushi. How come you didn't try it? <laughs> I don't know, but the, mo the thing that scared me the most was the anger, anger eel filet or something. Wow. The word anger and food doesn't really go good with me. No, armbar coming. Armbar, there he is. And this is it. That's it. He's got him. He's got a tap. You, you, you give up? <laughs> yeah, he's got it. He's going to get it. He's got it. I think he, uh, Alexander should have. He should not take a risk and break his arm. Kikuda is in position. He should start rolling now. Alexander should start rolling. Make a fist, twist his arm to the right, and then try to roll out. It will be his only way. I can't see from here where his elbow is. Is this the same referee that refereed Alex Stevens? Whoa, it's going to get out. He's going to get out. He's pushing the hands up. Unbelievable. He should hook his legs. He's oh, look at this. He's going to go for a triangle now. Not anymore. I can't believe look at this. he has it. Oh, look at this. If he gets out of this, man, this he, is this is not going to speak well about the finishing capability of Kuda. He could escape right now. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, right. he's getting out. Oh, my that Lord. Is. That was sheer guts. He just didn't want to tap. He just wouldn't tap. tap. That, that, he said, okay, that's it. I don't care. Break my arm. I don't care. Gotta get on the head again. He's trying to get under his dandruff, I guess. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> shoulders, baby. Yeah, but I don't see any dandruff. Look at this. What's this? He's, oh, he's tapping out? They call it uh, he's, 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 the... The referee's going, wait a minute. Is this guy tapping out? What's, what's this guy doing? And this guy's... He's trying to get the food to rattle, but it's too late. It's too late. Getting him rattled... It's, uh, if anything, Atsuka saved face in that he didn't get stopped in this yep. fight, but he got smoked in every other way. What? Okay, the only victory is that he went the distance. Now, the question is, will they shake hands after the fight? Yeah. I probably... I, uh... Well, that was total domination by Kikuda. I think so. If Kikuta wants to be a nice guy now, and he wants to gain a little bit more respect for the audience, well, he's tapping now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the referee? Give me water! Okay, now here it is. He's going for the arm bar. And it's, it looks pretty textbook. What do you think, Bob? I, uh, Kikuta should have uh, hooked his legs right there. His feet. And, uh... Um, Squeeze his knees together. Yeah, you watch the arm. Stretch the arm. 
extended the other way. That's an eye ball. And he didn't do that. Well, now let's see. That's not uh, any different from the way we saw it, boss. No, it, it, it's no big surprise. No, it's no surprise. Uh, that's good. It just wasn't competitive. Okay, they, they're going to make up. Okay. They're going to make up, I think. Okay. Oh, no. No, oh, come on, man. Oh, come on, man. That's no good. Oh, that's not good. I guess. I mean, that's a deep anchor right there. I don't know. Why, why do you... Vanderlei, you're going to be fighting Merkel Krokop. What problems do you think he, he presents to you? Problema nenhum, acho que só alegria. Eu estou muito bem preparado para essa luta e estou muito feliz de estar lutando com ele porque eu gosto de ganhar de bons atletas, não gosto de ganhar de atleta morto. Uh, he's a really good striker. He's from K1. Do you think that you're probably going to take this to the ground or will you stand up with him? Estou com a estratégia pronta, na verdade eu vou brigar com ele. Uma estratégia sempre é essa e não interessa com quem seja, vai ser sempre assim. Merkel, welcome to Pride once again. You're facing Vandele. What is your prediction on the fight? Yeah, I think I'm going to win this fight. Actually, I'm sure about that. Are you going to do it in a very gentle and strategic way, or are you going to do it in a violent way? I'm afraid that I have to do it in a violent way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Silva is that kind of fighter. He's very aggressive, and uh, attack is the best defense in this case. And now it's time for our main event, the K-1 is invading Pride with Mirko Krokop going up against the Pride middleweight champion in a non-title fight in Vanderlei Silva. You've got, in a way, two strikers. Boss, what is your pick? Listen, I am not going to pick a winner in this fight because they're both really, really good. We know Mirko Krokop is an excellent striker. He knocks out people in K1. That means you're special, trust me. Vanderlei Silva is a good striker himself too, but not K1 level, although he can surprise people. He's got a strange flying knee, he's got strange hands, and he's constantly coming. He's got to take this fight to the ground. That's one thing for sure, in order to win it. Okay, but vanderlei has been fighting a lot lately, yeah. and he says that that doesn't have any detrimental effect on him. Do you think it does? No, I don't think so. Um, a lot of fighting, like after 100 fights, I would say things like that. But what did he have? He's fighting every month, okay? But it makes him more relaxed. And training with all the guys that he has at the Shitbox Academy, all those wild guys, I really think that the fire is still there. I think that Vanderlei's key to victory in this is to get Krokop moving forward. Get him into a body lock, take him to the ground, mount him and ground and pound, hope he turns his back. But Krokop's game plan is definitely to land that left kick and try it for a knockout. But we're not gonna know what's gonna happen because Fireworks are going to explode in the ring tonight. In one sentence, how would you describe Vanderlei Silva? Um atleta com muita determinação, eu vou para dentro e minha principal característica é não ter medo de ninguém. Vanderlei Silva against 
Mirko Krokop from Croatia. Mirko Krokop is an anti-terrorist squadron leader in Croatia. <laughs> and um, he's gonna need all that skill against Van Lee. Whoa, here we go! Okay, Van Lee's gonna get uh, Mirko on the ground probably. Use movement, he's doing a good job here using movement. Mirko is so relaxed here. He's got that left high kick. Torpedo kick. Yeah, he's got his hands up. He did his homework. Uh, from the late hit. Now this is the K1 versus Pride. Van Le Sylvan in the black and white trunks. He's the Pride middleweight champion. And Mirko Krokop in the red and white checker trunks is uh, a K1 Grand Prix finalist. And in some ways, there's a lot at stake here other than just the match. The, the, it is a non-title fight though. Yeah, if Emily gave him a high kick, I think you can expect any type to high kick back. There it is. <laughs> and it, it was uh, shielded by Bangalore's arms. And... Oh! What a kick oh, to the body. To the liver! Bangalore got the lock. Oh, Bangalore's got it down! Bangalore got Cook up down! This is a scenario that most people thought would not happen. Bangalore! Oh! Oh! Look at this! This! This, this crowd is, I, I've never heard a crowd like this. Vanderlei Silva on top. Now, it's under special rules here. If the fight goes to the ropes and outside, they will not restart the fight standing the, uh, on, the, on the ground. They will restart the fight standing. Vanderlei on top. Well, this, uh, this fight is gonna be contested uh, unlike the other fights tonight, it will be contested under five three-minute rounds instead of the pride uh, uh, ten-minute and two five-minute. Now, see there, we have the restart once you close to the. Uh, this definitely favors the K1 fighter, who on paper is everyone would think the stronger stand-up fighter, and he's a little bigger than Vanderlei too. He outweighs Vanderlei in this fight by about five to seven pounds. Yeah, the, the audience just a minute ago, they were getting crazy here. I, if I would be a I would watch out for the kick to the river again because that was a hard to look at this. Look at this. Vanderlei. You could need there to deliver. Whoa, this is a shootout here. Vanderlei has surprised a lot of critics by dictating the stand up here. But I don't know that he wants to go to that too many times. He's using, uh, Bentley is really fighting a good strategy here so far. Yeah, very smart. Now he's got Krokop moving forward, and that's what he wants. He wants Krokop to try and punch or kick so he can take him down again, preferably toward the middle of the ring. That way, because, as I said before, if they scoot out, oh, man. And another thing, okay, not only do we have a special set of rules because it's K1 versus Pride and it was negotiated that way, and if they go to the ropes, uh, they will restart the fighter standing as opposed to uh, the regular pride rules. They will restart in the middle of the ring. Uh, there are no judges in this fight. Whoa. Nice high kick attempt there. There are no judges. So if this fight goes to distance, it's an automatic draw. It was a good body kick, but Vanderlyn grabbed the leg. And Boss, you talked about warnings early. Vanderlyn got the trip takedown there. But look at the, uh, the guard work there by Mirko. Wow, man, this, this, and we got four more rounds to go. But look, man, Bentley coming in there just swinging away. Oh, God. That was a really tense first round. It, um, I just want to say, yeah, you feel the tension. It's like I'm nervous for this fight. Yeah, because anything can happen. Krokop can land that left high kick and it could be over, or Bentley can take him down. And Bentley has submitted people in the past. He, he choked out Bob Schreiber. Uh, and he almost armbarred Sakuraba in the second fight that they had. Yeah, but his real strength is in striking from the top, kicking, kneeing, punching. That that whole combination package that he has there, it's very dangerous for any fighter in the whole world. Yeah, well, Mirko Krokop, that man right there. Uh, he, he stated, boss, that he and his partner spar full power with no mercy, and then he knocks out his sparring partners regularly. Yeah. And they keep coming back, and he says they like it. 
Yeah, he said also that he paid him. Yeah, they would have to. At least for the cat scan. And there it is, Vanderlei with the movement, and that is a smart strategy. And Vanderlei look countering. Going, going. And look, oh, Vanderlei on the bottom. But Krokop wants nothing of it. Whoa! Smart move by Krokop. Yeah, the thing with Krokop is, if he, if he connects one time, it could be it, you know? And he knows that too. Vanderlei is, is going for it, and he, he's actually backing up Krokop now with his combination, but they're not really aim perfectly. A poke was a little bit more good more jab accurate. by Van Lee. Now I, I would have to say, I've seen, I, I think I've seen almost every one of Van Lee's fights, and he's had quite a few of them. And I would have to say that this is the thinking Van Lee. Yeah, we never saw him like this before. No, Van Lee is fighting a real good strategy. And broke off. Yeah, that was that was on the arms. Yeah, it was a beautiful block. Because you, you catch the, the shin with the elbow, and that actually hurts the kicker more. Although it doesn't hurt to help make your elbow feel any better. Yeah. He's got the takedown again. Got another takedown, and they're close to the ropes. Vanley needs to get him in the center of the ring, because Merkel's going to try and scoop out so he can get a restart. Vanley should start punishing him with punches here, but Merkel's tying him up pretty well. Do you think that Mirko is surprised at how much stronger Vanderlei is than do you think he expected him to be weaker? Yes, I think so. And I think that uh, Mirko uh, also thought that Vanderlei was going only for takeout. I think he never expected that Vanderlei was going to strike that effective. Look, listen to the people here. Yeah, Vanderlei's starting to lay, lay down some punches. A lot of them are blocked, but he is the energetic one. And look at that look on Mirko's face. Merkel is in territory he has never been in his professional fighting career. He has never been on the bottom when the fight wasn't over. It looks almost like Mirko setting him up for an arm fight as he's holding the arm. <laughs> that would be a total surprise. And look at this. He's pounding away. Vanderlei trying to finish here. But Merkel is strong. And you know, boss, because Mirko is new at the game, being on the ground like that, do you think he's going to, his, his nervousness will cause him to get tired? Yeah, but the, when, the, when you have a tie boxers at that level, they're always very well conditioned. But I saw Jerome LeBanner fight, he got taken down, and then he ran out of gas in like a minute. Yeah, that's true, but it's Jerome LeBanner. He's, 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 uh, he's like a Michelin goal that's that big. Okay, well, Vandalay was really did well in that round. Uh, Vandalay has got to really save his energy, though. But it seems like he has enough of it. <laughs> well, Krokop knows he's in a fight now. Krokop went high again, but oh, actually that, that kick landed. And uh, that's a hard kick, boss. Yeah, with a, with a strong lag to the midsection, um, you don't want to get hit there. No. Later on in the fight, a kick like that could finish the fight. There were so many ideas about how this fight would unfold. Some people thought they would just meet in the middle of the ring and just duke it out. Some people thought they would, they would just stay away from each other and be boring. It has been a little bit of all of that because we've seen some stand-up, but it, the weird thing is that Vandalay has actually done better in stand-up. I think because Mirko doesn't quite know what to expect because he, like you said, expected the takedown attempt only. Yeah, and if you concentrate on that and you, you neglect a little bit your striking, that could bring you in, in trouble. But now, the third round, it brings you back in the game. It's like sparring. If you haven't sparred for two months and you go back for sparring, you need one, two, three rounds, and then the distance, everything is back. But that could be totally Vanderlei's game plan also. So that now we're around three or four right wide away. He's gonna go for a takedown. You don't know, he's fighting a really smart game. Yeah, he really is. And I personally would like to see the transition when K1 fighters get good enough at mixed martial arts to where they don't have to fight with five, three minute rounds and rope escapes and, and no judges. I would like to eventually see them fight with judges 
with the 10, 5, and 5, and under the full pride rules. That'd be great. But Prokop, out of all the batch of K1 fighters, has done the best in mixed martial arts so far. He had the big stoppage of Fujita with one knee, and he stopped uh, Yuji Nagata at the Inoki Bombaye on New Year's Eve 2001 into 2002. But here he is with the pride middleweight champion, got his hands full, but so does Vanderlei, and Vanderlei knows he can't get careless. Vanderlei shooting the high kick. Oh man, I'm really impressed with that. Have a nice striking ability here. And it, it's as if Prokop wanted to show him his own high kick, but he's setting himself up if Vanderlei can time it. He can grab the supporting leg, theoretically, but Prokop's left the kick is so fast. Vanderlei raging in, and Vanderlei got the uh, He's got a good position, and if he gets underhooks, oh, nice work by Prokop to escape the clinch. But Vandalay staying relaxed. What I like about Vandalay is he's using movement. Oh, and a good movement. Move to the left while the left kick's coming. Beautiful. But Vandalay can't get cocky here. He can't feel that, well, I'm in control. He's making it, you know. Vanderlei quick on the counter there. Those didn't really land, but oh, nice. good right hook there by Prokop, but it didn't really land either. Prokop keeping close to the ropes. You notice that? Yeah. It's got to be his game plan. Of course. With those rules? With, with the rules, if, if you slide out of the ring, you get an automatic restart. Vanderlei going high again. It makes you wonder. Prokop came in at 222 pounds, and speculation is that he could never make 205 pounds if he, if he did want to fight Vandalay for his middleweight title. Uh, but it makes you wonder how Prokop would do with Nogueira, or Heath Herring, or Coleman. Oh, oh, that was a good right hand for Vandalay there. And a good left hook counter by Prokop. Prokop gonna try and get out of the clinch. Vandalay needs to lock up behind, his, behind Prokop's back. Well, I'm telling you, Coco never, ever, in his wildest dream, expected this to show. And I think that most of the crowd didn't expect this either. But Vanderlei really fighting a good defensive and counter fight. Vanderlei has grown so much as a fighter. He used to be reckless and get knocked down by Shugo Yama and Sakuraba and Tamura, and people thought, well, if he gets knocked down by them, he's gonna get completely creamed by Prokop. But Vanley is using strategy. Wow. Super. Wow, I'm telling you, I'm I'm seeing an evolution of Vanley Silva right before my eyes in this fight. Me too. You know, he he was always careless. But now he's very careful, and, and because of it, he's fighting a perfect match. Look, Look at that, that right hand. That was a good right hand. Look at Prokop thought, what the hell was that? And he tried to fire the left hook. Prokop getting a lot of surprises in this fight. In Whoa. the confidence of Vanderlei to pick his shots like that right hand over the top. And Prokop trying to, to pound away. And, and look at him closing his eyes and turning. Wow. You know, you know what it is, boss? It's yeah. experience. Yeah, Vanderlei trained very much to block that left kick from Prokop and counter it with the right straight. You see it in every move he makes, he counters. So he makes Prokop think. He thinks, uh, makes him think. If you make a partner think that everything you throw, you, it's gonna get countered, it's gonna make you confused. And it's, it's working perfectly. Well, the one thing that frustrates me, if I, if I, if I, if I can say, is that in uh, a fight like this where there is an agreement to where there's no judges, that's frustrating for me because if they go the distance, there's not that finality. Even even if we think that one guy won the fight. Yep. Right now, in a scoring system, I would have to say Vandalay was ahead. Yes, me But too. there is no scoring. So yep. it's sort of like, you know, when a trapeze artist is playing on the trapeze and there's a net beneath them, they have a net. You like that, don't you? I love it when you do that. My analogies? Your analogies are the best. You love you love my analogies and I love your liver shot. Well, actually, I don't love it. That's why I'm never going to let you hit me with it. <laughs> oh, my God, please don't. You said it all in one sentence. But again, I, I said it earlier, and I, I think it's the experience here. Prokop is facing the unknown in a lot of ways because he's facing a champion in mixed martial arts. 
Yeah, what kind of champion? And it's a champion that he outweighs, and maybe on you know, his physical level might be a little bit stronger. If they were to like do arm wrestling or something, or straight kickboxing for sure on paper. But Bambi, look at this. I mean, he's he's sort of dominating him. But and, and, and Prokop comes back and he thinks, well, I'm going to show you. Because, but then Prokop knows if he does that, he's going to get Clint to take him down. Yeah. It's like Vanderlei is trying to suck him into a trap. Oh! Nice, nice try, but it didn't land. No, he should do that kick inside low kick. Set him up for something like that. Oh, that is definitely the show right there. Definitely. Oh, yeah. But Vanderlei's going forward now. Vanderlei can't get reckless. Because we know Vanderlei sometimes when he gets hurt, he comes in there and just wants to dog it. Look at the oh. his body. Be, that could be the, the start of the finish. Yeah, because Manley's got to well, has got to keep his elbows tucked in. Well, this. If I were the money maker, if I were Manley, Manley's making a mistake. He's moving forward. He shouldn't do this. Manley should move back. Manley's been. Oh, is Prokop going to take him down? No. I think Prokop is starting to lure Vanderlei into his trap. Yeah, but I think also that first kick in the body, it, trust me, it takes a lot out of him. Yeah, because look at his, his body is, is lumped up. Vandalay's got to keep his elbows in. Vandalay's making a mistake by moving forward. If this were a judge's fight, he'd want to move forward. But he gets caught with too many of those uh, left kicks to the body. Vandalay clinching up. Prokop against the ropes. Prokop doesn't want any part. And Prokop dropping down low, but he didn't want to get taken down. Prokop pushes back on Vandalay's chin. Prokop dropping down low. And Vandalay, oh, he grabbed the ropes. That is not legal here, even under these altered rules. That's what Prokop uh, should keep doing now. Knee into the body. Man, Vanderlei fights a really good game here. Just a, a real good game. I mean, Prokop is dangerous, folks. He can knock you out with one shot. Mark Hunt, the K1 Grand Prix Tournament Champion of 2001, who weighs 250 pounds, ate that high kick of, of Prokop and went to the death. He didn't finish him, but it almost did. Vanderlei has blocked every high kick so far. And he's got a Oh, and of round number four. Is the last round coming up? Last round coming up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What a fight. Just always when you think you know with these kind of rules. Look at that spot. Bruise under his rib cage. Man. God knows he broke something there. I don't think so. Here we go. See, he, he blocked it to a expected the high kick and Virgo went low. That's a hard shot, boss. Look, look at the impact. Oh, God. But, you know, I think Vandalay was ready for it. No, he didn't break his ribs. If he broke his ribs, he would be wincing and moving back. Really? Have you ever broken your ribs? Okay. Yeah, but, you know, it, it, they say it's more worse to, to bruise your ribs, you know, to dislocate them than break. Breaking, apparently, you don't feel. Not right now, with the adrenaline going on and everything. After the fight. But I never broke my ribs. Okay, let's say the fight goes to the draw. Where does that, we, we, Flanderly retains his title because it's a non-title fight. Where does that put Merkel? Back to the drawing board? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. You know, the, the thing right now what we see is they throwing only the kicks because that's, they're longer than the punches. He doesn't want to throw the punches because he's afraid to take him, get taken down. But as you said, where, who's he gonna fight next? Yeah, because, uh, and, what, boss, would you think this would be kind of more of a loss for Prokop if it goes the distance? Yes. I think. I mean, this is on his uh, rules. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's not under pride rules. And the people, I mean, this is still a mixed martial art fight. Yeah, but still, he's fighting better than they pretty much the toughest middleweight in the world. So, uh... It was so shame nothing. This is it, it's just a very devastating fight. And he's looking real good tonight, I'm telling you. Well Prokop is moving forward in this in this round. There's the high kick again, but you know he's gonna throw the middle kick again. Watch. Yeah, or inside logic. 
Emily Nice blasting a right roundhouse kick to the body of Merkel Prokop. And you notice how every time Vandalin lands a good shot, it makes Merkel go forward. See that? He wants to pay him back. That's exactly what uh, Vandalin wants. Yeah, of course, because he wants to clinch it. See, oh, look at this. Merkel tried to land that left hand, but it, it didn't catch Vandalin clean. Okay. Uh, Merkel couldn't take Vandalin down. Vandalin. He's a decent wrestler. We saw that against Henderson. Oh. Vanderlei going for the takedown and gets it! Vanderlei on top in the guard. Merkel Prokop. We're getting near the middle to the end of the round. I think Vanderlei should just unload right here. I think so too. Just blast away like no tomorrow. Just punch like there is no tomorrow. Yeah, if this would have been the judges, Vanderlei would have won the fight. Absolutely. But if it would have been with judges, maybe Burke would have fought. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. Because we saw that with the Pride Grand Prix, where Grayson was fighting unlimited rounds. He won the first two rounds, or, or first couple rounds. But then he lost. Oh. You gave him a headbutt? What does the referee say? No. What happened? Maybe an intent. Okay. Will, will that make Prokop react? But we're closing in on one minute left. Prokop moving forward. He's got to do something if he wants to win this fight now. Prokop wants to win in a spectacular way. Tried for the straight left. Vandalay clinching up. Vandalay firing away. Oh. Prokop was thinking about a knee, but it was too late. Look at his reflex. Vandalay's uh, reflexes are still top notch. Vandalay yes. clinching. Vandalay got the body lock up against the ropes. It may be too late, though. Benley. 30 minutes, or 30, 30 seconds left. <laughs> and uh, finally, Prokop sprawls away. And, oh! That was a hard oh. body. One or two more could finish the fight, but it's 15 seconds. 15 seconds. And Benley is not going to stop anymore now. Trust me. To a draw, but I loved it. I think from all the special rules fights that we've seen with K1 and, and Pride, this was the best one. Oh, without question. But I, I'm wondering if there's going to come a time where the where the Pride uh, fighting championship hosts K1 fighters. They host K1 fighters and they fight under Pride rules. Now, we've seen the Pride Fighting Championship armed and ready, but coming Sunday, June 30th, the Pride Fighting Championships demolition coming to you on June 30th, folks, in the United States on pay per view. And getting into the ring, we've got Kazushi Sakuraba. Man, and this guy's a legend here. Sakuraba giving the flowers to Vandalay, and they, they give him the supportive hug. Man, that music's loud. Oh, yeah. I almost can't hear myself. I, I almost can't even hear myself. Well, Sakuraba's going to say something. He's going to say something about uh, something. Good evening. え、あの、最後の試合すごい緊張感があって、いい試合だったと、あの、横で見てたんですけど、僕も早くここのリングに帰って、試合ができればいいと思いますんで、また応援してください。本当お疲れ様でした。Okay, uh, Vandalay's uh, nemesis, uh, Sakuraba, made the statement and he said that that was an intense fight. And he, Sakuraba cannot wait, can hardly wait to come back to the ring. And there is Vandalay Silva, still the Pride Middleweight Champion. He, did, he didn't really, actually, I think uh, if anybody gained in this fight, it was Vandalay Silva.
I think so too. This fight made him a, a, a way better fighter than he used to be before. Yeah, I, I think that because Mirko Krokov, everybody thought that, oh, he's just going to knock Vanderlei out because Sakuraba knocked Vanderlei down. And, but Mirko did not live up. And there's Antonio Noki congratulating Vanderlei Silva. And uh, I tell you, Mirko Krokop has got to go back to the drawing board. He's got to work a little harder. He didn't really, he, he didn't lose the fight, obviously, because there were no judges. But in a way, if there would be a winner in a draw of this magnitude, it was Vanderlei Silva. I think so too. I think exactly the same thing. Um, it made him a better striker, a, better, a, a, a way better fighter. The next opponent of Vanderlei, he better go to watch out because he's, he's way more complete now. Scary. Yeah, he's complete because he faced Mirko Krokov, and that's the K1's like one-hit wonder that they wanted to bring into mixed martial arts that they thought were going to clean up, but probably not just yet. They still have to change the rules, but if they want to compete in mixed martial arts, if he wants to step in against guys his own weight, Mirko Krokov, like Nogueira, Aaron, Mark Coleman, you know, Tom Ellicks, and keep it guys here and go, and, and they don't want to do the, the K1 rules, the fight the fight rules, they got to do a little more homework. But Bas, I'm telling you, when we saw that fight between Ninja and Mario Spurry, that's one of the greatest fights, grappling-wise, I've ever seen. Yeah. It was unbelievable, the intensity, the power, everything that threw out the first round and the second round. <laughs> it was crazy. It's always with the pride. Every time we think we got the best fight ever, and then bang, there is another show, and we got more of those fights. It's great. Well, I'll tell you, Gorilla Ninja Hua has put himself into a really interesting position. His stablemate, Bentley Silva, is a five minute world champion, and they're in the same weight division. But they've got all these other guys swarming around. We've got Quentin Jackson. We've got all those Brazilian top team guys. We've got Marona and the Nogueira's brother, who is down at 205. You know, we really should have a tournament. I don't know. we got so many middleweights, good middleweights. A tournament here. Who to pick? If it's an eight-man tournament, who are they going to pick as a middleweight to compete in that tournament? Which eight? Because well, they're all good. I'll tell you right now who they should pick. Okay. Come on. Alex Stevens, the Brazilian killer, and a lot of Brazilians are like a piece of him right now. All the Brazilian top team guys want to fight him. All the shoebox guys want to fight him. That's Alex Stevens. Quincy Jackson, two guys from the U.S. They got no friendship. They can fight each other. They got Arona from Brazilian top team. The Minotauro Nogueira. You've got Kakuda who can factor in there. And you've got a whole bunch of other guys. Maybe we have a tournament. And the winner of the tournament, if, as long as it's not Ninja, fight Vandalay for the title. Sky is the limit. That's one thing that we know. And you know what the scary thing is here at the Pride Show? We can do it also with the heavyweight division because we got the best heavyweights in the world too. What is it going to be? Okay, now don't forget, June 30th, coming at you live on pay-per-view, the Pride Fighting Championships demolition. Be there, folks, so on behalf of my broadcast partner, the guy with the cell phone, the guy with the sunglasses, Bas Rutten. El Wapo. Wapo. I'm Steven Quadros. I am the fight professor. It's been a pleasure. Domo origato. Sayonara. Take care. Oh, bye-bye. I got you on that. <laughs> you got me, but I got the last word this time. Okay, no, no I do. No, I did. No, okay, I did. Bye. 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 bye.